This is going to be my uh, Alberta Whitetail Hunt 2021. Started with uh, putting out trail cameras in February. Got pictures of deer, moose, deer in the year, you know. Got some pretty nice animals on the cameras. So pretty optimistic about the area that I was going to be hunting. Elk, of course. Here we are, this is uh, about 10 days before my start of my hunt. And I went out and found this great big old spruce on the ground. Perfectly cured. Knocked it in the block. Exactly what I need, one big tree. Heck of a pile of wood right there. There's uh, probably half a quart of wood. So then I brought this home and uh, just split her right in the driveway, you know. And uh, get the electric wood splitter going here right away. Fire this thing up here. Boy, she splits wood pretty good. So this part of the hunt here, I had planned this wall tent hunt for, for a year, right? And uh, I mean, I started scouting in February. I checked my trail cams once a month, every month, from February all the way right up until November. And uh, a couple times, there was months I actually checked them a couple times. And uh, I was really optimistic. I know that there's some big bucks out in the area where I was hunting and also some bull elk, which I was hopeful for. But uh, around about November 22, fate intervened and uh, it changed my hunting plans completely, as you'll see. And uh, in fact, all my hunting plans for subsequent years completely, completely changed in one instant, which, it, like I say, that will be explained here in a bit. So we, uh, we got that whole uh, huge spruce out of the truck. That's our pile. There's a half a cord of wood there. Decent. Okay, it's November 19. We just got into our uh, wilderness campsite here. And uh, over the last week, man, did we get a pile of snow. So we're just gonna dig it, uh, dig out a spot here. Right over here is about the level of spot we had picked out. Okay, it's 2.30. And we just got camp roughed in here. There's still some things left to do. Haven't put the sand in the bottom of the barrel stove or lit the stove yet. That's the old Norseman that I got at uh, Northwest Tent and Awning like 25 years ago or something like that. 30 years ago. Okay. Well, let's jump on the rhino. I'm going to take... Can leave it open? No. No. I'm going to take the tub trailer out with us. What's that? I know, but I'm going to bring some uh, tent poles back and fix that up. Wow, what a disaster. When we left camp last night, I had forgot my pegs, right? It wasn't windy last night. Well, when we set up. But overnight, the friggin' wind came up and it blew my tent over. Son of a bitch. Now I got to take all this and set the tent back up. That's not the way you want to start out. Just Some of my poles got bent and the tent gets flipped over. So. Uh, still a little bend, but it had a bit, huge bend. I took it over. There's a couple of poplar trees over on the edge of the lease that are Double, double trunk, stuck the pole in between there and I got most of the bend out of it. I hope that's enough. So this is what we're doing. I, uh, there was a lot of big humps here, tents on the ground anyway, so I, I brought a landscaping tool, chopped off a bunch of these big hummocks, filled in some of the, the dips. The lease here is really rough, eh? Because uh, 
when they abandoned this lease, they scored it up with the ripper blade on the back of a dozer. Holy Christ, it's rough. Just walking across, you're, because the snow is a foot deep on top of it, and it's full of holes. Holy shit. Anyway. So now that I've done and bent, uh, took the worst bend anyway out of that one pole, I think I'm going to do a little assessment on the rest. I actually think I got away lucky that that was the worst. Oh, my lantern got thrown over. Looks, doesn't look like it broke. That's amazing. Yeah, I think I don't. I don't think I have to straighten anymore. Thank God, because that's a pain in the butt. So, get after. Uh, Got to break the frame down, put it back together, you know, tarp back on it, etc., etc. Uh, I've been uh, so I've been working about an hour and a half, I think. I've kind of lost track of time, but as you see, I got the tent back up, and this time the son of a bitch is pegged down. Yeah, you know, I've got a wicked camping checklist that just happened to have forgotten. 10 things. So, all my gear is still outside. Snow on it. So now, I'm uh, just rounding everything up, getting everything inside the tent, and get that stove going and knock the snow off, warm up. It's minus 12 or some damn thing out here with a wind chill. So, with the tent. She's looking like, look at all my gear. Just carbon and snow. Alright. Later. <coughs> so what I'm doing here is I've got sand in this metal bucket. And I, uh, I have to put a layer of uh, sand in the bottom of the stove to prevent the bottom burning out. Put about an inch and a half in there. Kind of have to chop the sand out of the, this bucket because it froze up on me in there. Two hours since I got in here and found the disaster of the tent on the ground. It was uh, quite the deal here. And I, because uh, I had so much work to do, I just I took all my heavy clothing off. So, <laughs> gotta warm up now. have a fire here shortly. Well, I, uh, I still got to knock the snow off all of this gear here before it gets some heat in here and it all turns to water. So we'll do that.
be hard to beat fresh burnt coffee. The camp is taking shape here finally. I left White Court this morning. Uh, geez, eight no, eight thirty-nine o'clock, something like that. Got out here, found my tent upside down. You heard that already. And then, uh, geez, it was probably an hour to get the tent set up. Another hour to get everything mustered into the tent. Now I've just uh, been going around and getting every other thing organized. I got my percolator loaded up, ready to go for the morning. Got some kind of macaroni thing in there. It's frozen, so it's just going to slowly thaw on the stove. And yeah, I got a little pile of wood ahead of myself. She's almost time to go for a little walkabout. Just a, it's going to be like a scouting trip here, I think. And uh, see what's looking like outside now. So it's got to be. Probably about a quarter after two here now. The tent is uh, not bad. I did get to, some of my poles got bent, and you can see there's a nice little ding in my stovepipe from when it flipped over. But you know, all in all, not so worse. Would have been a hell of a thing if, uh, if any of the poles had actually kinked when they. When they went over, but all I did, I just got some slight bends in them, you know. Got to consider I got away lucky. Smoke coming off the stove pipe there. Okay, so it's the afternoon here now of uh, November 20. It's about 3 o'clock. And uh, right in here is a doe coming up through the bush with two fawns. And what I didn't realize at the time, uh, the back of the lease that I'm camped on, the, the deer are feeding right on the back corner of the lease. So these deer are coming up this draw and they're heading right into the back of the lease. They're literally feeding uh, 100 yards from the tent. So right here, because I only had like an hour or something left in the day when I decided to go out, I'm just hunting on the ground, just a ground line uh, sitting on my hiking stool. Didn't bring the, the climbing trees down. So this uh, doe and two fawns, they came right up across here. They were only about 40 yards from me. They came up and kind of held up in the trees there for a little bit. And then they moseyed on and, uh, you know, it turns out that what they were doing, they were just continuing on up through this little draw up in that feeding area on the back of the lease. Maybe 10 o'clock at night, sitting here in the tent, sipping on a scotch. Been sort of just organizing things here, setting up the old stove, and I mean old. That's a jewel there. And uh, 
this old Norseman wall tent, earlier I thought it was 25 years old. In fact, I bought this in 1988, which makes this uh, 33 years old. Look at, there's a, there's a patch. And there's another small patch. Uh, each of these patches, that's where sparks landed and just kind of singed it, you know, little burn mark, little sort of star on the canvas. Yeah. I, uh, I just bought the material and the glue and patched it myself, of course. Why would I pay somebody else to do it, right? <clears throat> Listen to that. The sound of coffee slow perking on the uh, wood stove. You don't get a better perk than that right there. Yeah, so this morning, I mean, it sure seemed like a disaster, right? Come in here. It was uh, about a quarter after 10 that I get in here from Whitecourt. Just one of those deals where I had to stay overnight on the 19th. Didn't want to, and then in, in the end, it turned out I didn't have to, but that's what I did. And uh, <laughs> get out here and find the tent flipped upside down. And that tent, when the wind took it over, it went. And it did an endo, right? So it it lifted up, and the whole freaking tent flew beyond another length of the tent like it was 20 feet away from where I had it the day before had a couple poles bent one bent quite quite a bit luckily didn't kink right if it had kinked I'd have been buggered but just a bend in it I put it between a couple of poplars double trunk and uh, you know straightened out pretty not perfect but straight as I needed and uh, when I get home maybe I look and find that I can you know clean a few of them up like that but I mean when you consider <laughs> what we were looking at in the morning and here's our little tent set up here you know really it's a funny thing how much time you can spend just organizing. It takes you just don't do it in an hour, right? It takes a while. Got coat hangers, got the coats hanging up, got the pants drying, pots hanging there. Coffee percolate. That's a beautiful thing. More yeah, good, good perk coffee. Because uh, once it's perked, I just reheat it, right? That's why I got this old boy set up just so I can. Uh, Fire the stove in the morning, rewarm that, that perk coffee, and uh, I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. I know for sure one thing I forgot my cell phone in the truck. The truck is a kilometer away from here. So, yeah, for that that's first thing I gotta go get that freaking phone because that's the only thing I got for telling time right so this is uh, 2021 Alberta whitetail hunt grizzly country outdoors style which means rough and half ass and head down ass up Make it up as you go along. Yep. So now it's the morning of November 21. I'm 20 feet up in a poplar in the, the Summit Goliath climbing stand. And uh, I was looking forward to having a really good day here.
Okay, so my rattling and grunting, I've called up a 4x4 four four whitetail here. You watch, it, watch this buck coming up through the trees here. So this is a real nice young buck, but like he's, he's a four by four. He's probably about three years old. This is the type of deer, when I see a deer like this, I'm gonna let this deer walk. And it's not because he's a four by four, it's because he's a young four by four. I, you know, I'll happily shoot an old four by four. Uh, I'll show you like this one last year. And that's an old mature buck. Well, that was pretty cool. That buck came right into the grunting and the rattling. He uh, came straight in and then he came kind of around behind me. And then for whatever reason, uh, he lost interest and he kept on going up to the bush. Pretty nice buck, but just a young buck, right? So now it's about 45 minutes later and uh, here I, did, I rattle in another buck. And this little guy literally comes running in and as he goes by the stand listen to him grunting it's it's really funny So as this little buck goes around behind the stand, grunting, you know, as, as, he, as he was going by, he, he circling around the stand looking for the deer that he, he heard grunting and fighting. And what you're going to see as I swing the camera around, another deer came in at the same time, a 4x4, four four, a bigger deer. You're going to see it standing in the, in the poplars right there behind the smaller deer. And then the two of them circle out the other side of my stand together. And by the way, this is definitely not the same 4x4 that came in the first time, so it's a different 4x4. This is a little bit bigger deer than the, the first 4x4 that I grunted in. So now you see the pair of them, uh, the bigger 4x4 and the small forky heading on out together, and uh, they take off. Not very long after this, I guess it was a half an hour, 40 minutes or something like that, uh, all of a sudden a doe come running down through the bush and she was being chased by, I believe, the same damn little fork, forker. Uh, so that's coming up here right away.
So here we have a doe getting chased up through the bush by a little buck, uh, like a, a two-pointer. It's probably the same little deer that came running and grunting past my stand. I wouldn't be surprised. And this is only about five minutes later and uh, 4 by 4 comes following along on the exact same trail that the doe and the little buck take. Which is pretty normal by the way. I mean if you, if you see one uh, buck scent trail on a doe through the bush, trust me there's another one going to come along or maybe <laughs> there might be three or four more come along on that exact same scent trail. So on my way up to the bush here on the 22nd, I ran into a doe and two fawns again, cutting up through that exact same draw, which is behind me now because I went further west up this uh, ridge that I'm sitting on. And while I'm sitting here facing basically to the west, what I didn't know, there was deer walking all over behind me because after a while I get down out of the stand uh, there's just nothing going on here and when I turn and start to walk back I start cutting all these fresh tracks and they are fresh and uh, you'll see what happens here later on in the afternoon.
So not long after I rattled a buck, he came right across out through that poplar across from me. But he didn't react to what I was doing at all. He just kept right on traveling and uh, he ended up, I saw him another 150 yards further down the draw to my left, which is back toward the east. He just kept right on trucking. Never saw how big his rack was either. Just a buck. So now it's about four o'clock, it's later in the afternoon and uh, I, I get fed up with sitting at the poplar where I was and I turned and started to head back toward camp and as soon as I did I started running into all this fresh sign and I realized that I had deer walking behind me all day. So I set up in a tree and the next thing you know, uh, two four by four bucks come sent trailing through here. The first one I missed, I did not get it on film. I got this, I get the second one here. So right about here, this deer just basically disappears from uh, from view here in the in the cover, and he uh, he just kept right on heading on down the ridge there, sent trailing the doe. It's November 22, Monday, November 22. Uh, I'm sitting here. What time is it? Eight thirty. Sitting here drinking a scotch, reading Robert Roark, use an Afghan. Doesn't get a hell of a lot better than that. Not it just doesn't get much better than that. All I can hear the sound of the lantern, crackling of the fire. Beautiful. Today, I uh, saw three bucks, two does, two bucks for a four point, one buck I never saw because he was in the brush. Well, was another day. Man, the deer are just set trailing and moving all over. Honest to God, I, I haven't hunted further than 400 yards from camp. And I've seen half a dozen deer every day, three bucks every day about. There's but I haven't seen Mr. Big yet, so hmm. November twenty-three. Tomorrow. It's November twenty-three and it's windier than hell. So I decided to go for a walk today, uh, just rounding up my cameras. I've had these uh, cameras out since last February. And the funniest thing happened today, by chance, I spotted a, one of my blaze marks on a tree. And bloody hell, it was a camera that I've had up since February and I don't think I checked it this year. Just absolute fluke that I saw the blaze, went in and grabbed it. <laughs> so it'd be funny to see what's on it. So that camera shot pictures from February 4th all the way up to April 5 until the batteries died. 626 pictures and a pretty spanky picture of a, of a cougar actually I must say. The final picture it took before the battery died. Because uh, basically it probably took pictures till the battery died. 
Could be a thousand pictures on the damn thing. I hope, uh, I don't think I'm gonna lay hands on some, but I mean, whatever deer or elk that walked by here probably would be the same ones that I saw on all the other cameras, but you never know. Okay. Anyway, it's gonna be interesting to see what's on, what the hell, and all, on, on the others. Hunting at the same time, but not super hopeful right now because of the wind. But uh, the rut doesn't, deer don't care about wind in the rut, they'll be moving anyways. Could stumble on one. Yes, unfortunately, they don't come running in every time. So I decided to head out to the side road, and I'm sitting here, and the next thing you know, here comes a 4x4 four four buck scent trail right down the road, walking right toward me. It's a really nice looking buck, a young buck. And this deer is already showing G4s, they're just little nubs. Yeah, if he can survive the wolves in another three, four years, he could be really something special.
pretty amazing how close this deer comes to me. He just walks up, he just gets closer and closer. And uh, you'll see him when he gets, you'll see him, he, he puts his head up and you can see him starting to sniff. And then just right in there, he gives one little snort. Right, right there somewhere. Right there, and then, he, and then he just turns and walks around me. I'm just sitting on the ground on my hiking stool, that's it. Just white camo on, nothing else. As it's starting to get dark, and I, I walk down the side road, you Look can where see the all, snow's all the torn two up. big bucks were fighting. Tore the hell out of those all the way over and the that side. edge. And then they were fighting all the way down in the ditch here. The ditch is all torn up. There's a big chunk of fur that got ripped out of one of them. Look at how far out in the ditch they were. They were all the way from over here, over there, in behind that poplar, and then up across the road. It's the morning of November 24th, and uh, I, I had to get out of bed at 6 in the morning. My feet were frozen. I've got a really good sleeping bag, but my feet were frozen. So I climbed out and checked the tent in here. It's minus 12 in the tent this morning. Everything's frozen. This is the first morning I've actually lit the fire in the morning, but yeah. The other mornings, uh, it's been minus. Seven minus eight in here, it wasn't bad. Anyway, yeah, it's only six thirty. Not, not going hunting for a while, so I'm just gonna sit here with that, this fire warm me up, and have myself a hot coffee. Morning of uh, Wednesday, November 24th. First night I was cold in the tent. I uh, I normally been getting up at 7:30, but I chased out of bed at six. So I get out and I check the temperature in here. Minus 12 in the tent. I got a really good sleeping bag, but my feet were frozen. So I had to get up. Stoke up the fire, so now we're just sitting here trying to warm our feet, have ourselves a hot coffee. It's a good morning. I mean, hunting deer. Gonna go to a different spot today. First, at uh, I went out here, there's an old cut block that's all thick overgrown and every day I was over there I saw deer, I saw three bucks a couple different days. Rattled in three deer on November 21st. That was probably more to do with the time of day as to where I was, right? Even so, I want to push over in beyond. I'm going to nip, like I'm going to go cross through this old uh, cut block into the bush on the other side and see what the deer are moving like over there. I have a feeling there's going to be some deer moving in that piece of bush. That's the plan. This is where that buck fight was last night on the road. Excuse my shadow. Let's get it around this way. So they were all the way across the road here. Down into the ditch. Well, all the way down in the ditch there, it's torn up. 
and uh, it's a big tuft of deer hair right there that get ripped out of one of them. They had a hell of a go. Must have been a couple of pretty good sized bucks. So I uh, I walk down through this old cut block, right? And it's thicker than hell. It's way too far to walk carrying that uh, 50 pound climbing stand and pack. And uh, when I, I finally mooch my way through this damn uh, old cut block, I end up on the cut line. I find out I could have literally driven right to where I ended up walking. Feet up another poplar in the summit Goliath tree stand. So this was an excellent stand site. Unfortunately, no deer came out, but you know, it's right place, just wrong time. Uh, and uh, the, the bad part now, I gotta walk, because it's dark, it's falling, right? Now I have to walk basically a mile up through that old overgrown cut block in the dark, navigating with a headlamp. My God, when I got to camp, was I ever soaked with sweat. It was crazy when I got back to camp. November 24, just get back to camp. Man, I had to slog a kilometer in the dark through that freaking old cut lock. So sweat, and if I put soap on me, I'd have, I'd have, I could wash. Like it, it's minus seven in the here, but Feels good not having any, any shirt on. It was so freaking warm. I can't wait to pour myself a scotch. I had a real interesting day. I, I, it was beautiful country it was. Right place, wrong time. Absolutely. But, as far as walking here from camp, carrying that 50 pound pack, it's too far. Especially coming back in the dark. So, I'm going to switch her up tomorrow. Not sure, I'll uh, model on it tonight and in the morning some whim will come to me and yeah, tomorrow's the 25th, I think, Thursday? Not sure, you lose track out here, at least I do. Freaking, oh man, I'm getting the hate on for rose bushes too. <laughs> Reaching down to grab a strap. Grab a friggin' rose bush. Get a rose spine stuck in that finger. Well, I am pour a whiskey. That's that's what's happening here now. has happened to me today so far. Alright, shut this off. 
So tonight we're cooking bacon. Ooh, on uh, jalapeno cheese bread. Oh my God, is this good? Mmm. There's bacon and cheese bread. Ah. Oh. No mustard, no ketchup. Doesn't need it. Oh my god. Mmm. 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 Oh. That's almost as good as a scotch. It's November 25, 2021. I got a couple tips for you for your summit, Goliath. With my backpack in the summit, I got like 50 pounds on me, right? See this? I got a, I got a heavy leather belt. It's passed just through the, the bottom of the stand. Cinch that up on your waist. Like when you're backpacking, right? All good backpacks have a hip belt like that. And a chest strap. It put, it keeps the your shoulder straps from sliding out on your shoulders. Let me do this up and you'll see. There. Now I'll tell you something. With that waist belt and the shoulder strap, it's it just takes so much. It makes the pack feel lighter. It's not, but having those that uh, shoulder strap, waist belt. Yeah, you got. It's November 25. So I hiked into a nice little piece of bush here with, the, there's a couple of really good deer crossing areas here. Nice trails coming in along the edge of this and heading into this old cut block. I'm sitting here and I come to the realization I'm not, I don't have my stand quite in the right position for this particular spot. So there's something has been gnawing on me for like two, two days here and uh, I'm sitting here in this stand and I'm looking at where I'm sitting and I, I realize I didn't position my sand correctly so I'm uh, talking away to myself about how I should move the stand and I came to the realization that I should move the stand 40 miles. I'm in the wrong piece of bush uh, and the reason is because I saw an absolute once in a lifetime whitetail on the night of the 22nd in the dark along a deserted piece of highway and I'm thinking to myself what in the hell am I doing sitting in this piece of bush instead of going out and pursuing that monster buck. So I was sitting in my stand there an hour ago and I was talking about how where I was positioned wasn't really in the right place I should have been back along the old cut block all that crap. I was gonna move my stand. Well there's something that's been driving me crazy and I should have I was gonna talk about it at the end of all of this hunt, right? But if, if I'm moving I'm going where there's a monster buck. I know this is gonna sound crazy. The other night I had to go home to White Court to get some more supplies, eh? And in the middle of nowhere, deserted highway, no farms, just all huge bushes, as far as the eye can see. A monster whitetail walked across the highway in front of me, in the dark. I slowed right down, stopped beside him, and I looked at him, and I couldn't believe the size of this deer. He had a body like a 45-gallon drum. 
I swear his rack was that wide when he turned and looked at me and black horns right from because he lit one of them big bush bucks that lives in the spruce he was just giant and I I just have been thinking to myself over and over about this deer and I was thinking how oh, was how you know next year I'm going to make a big plan to go after him and, and I says what the hell am I thinking I got to go after him now so I mean, I, this is about a 2% chance I'll even see him, but I will go out there and I'll go as hard as I can to find him. So all this is coming down in the tub trailer here as fast as I can get her unloaded. So I'm breaking down camp here as fast as I can and as rough as I can. I just want to get the hell home. So that's one trip. I think two trips and I'm out of here. Bye to this camp. Okay, camp's busted. That's the end of, I guess you say, part one, wall tent camp and deer hunt. After this, I'm going home and then I'm gonna go chasing and I'm telling you, if I see this deer, if I can put him on the ground, it's the type of buck that would not look out of place as a cover picture on a big buck magazine, I swear to God. So, huh, yeah, of course, you know how it is. I'm not going to get it, but I'm sure it's all going to try. It's Friday, November 26th, and this is the start of the hunt for a buck I call the tank, a monster buck today saw crossing the highway a couple days ago. Before I go after this deer, I had a little unfortunate incident with my marlin. It, it dropped out of the door of my rhino in my haste on pack camp. I actually drove over it with the tub trailer, which I'm probably going to fire it and find it still holding zero, no problem. And uh, I've also got my Model 700 Classic 300 H&H &H in a Bell and Carlson stock. And I'm probably going to end up hunting for this buck using this rifle just because the area where I'm going to be is primarily old cut block uh, with some cut lines. The, the 300 H&H &H I suspect will be bang on already. i got to fire the 470 for the 4570, then the 300, make sure we're good. And uh, as soon as I know my rifles are verified, out we go. So let's, uh, let's get some shooting done here. Marlin checked out. You gotta love that 300 H&H &H cartridge, eh? Isn't that a beautiful thing? Okay, we'll walk down and have a look here. Okay, so that's not quite what I thought. There's where the marlin hit. I, uh, somebody else already had target up, so I just took advantage of it. They marked off their shots. There's where the 300 hit. Uh, I might take another shot with the 300, just to make sure. And uh, the marlin looks like it did get knocked about, so. I think I'm going to have to retire it for now. I don't have time to play around sighting it in. Okay, there's four shots from the 300. Let's go hunting. So needless to say, the deer that I'm going after, there's no chance I'm revealing the location of this deer to anybody. So I... I'm going to be extremely careful of the, uh, any videos or pictures I even take so that people can't recognize where I am. 
that's an exceptional buck I'm looking for. <coughs> anyway, uh, so that it is what it is. Nobody can know where this deer lives. The funny thing is, and the good thing it is, the absence of roads and very few cut. I meant very few cut lines. It's all cut block. Blocks means that I'm guaranteed I'll have this area to myself. That's a good thing. Look at the country where this deer lives. There's just mile after mile of this cut block. Interconnected cut blocks. It's just all the way up and down. Gullies. No wonder a deer can live the old age in here. Holy shit. I've got a couple miles on the boots so far. Well, shit. At 8.30, the frickin' I saw an animal moving down the road like 800 yards. And my first, it had its nose to the ground, my first thought was there's a, a deer scent trailing, right? So, I look at it through, the, and, there's, and I realize right away by the gate that it was a wolf. So, he went up around the corner. And then, 45 minutes later, this huge wolf came bounded down the hill into the, the old logging road. Headed the same direction, and it was huge. It had to have been the alpha. That's okay, 45 minutes. So now, I'm sitting here, and I see a, an animal come out, and like, there's a deer, right? Nope, it's a wolf. And then there's another one, and then three of the bastards. He just come right up out of the friggin' the very same draw where I was sitting yesterday. And uh, one come onto the road 280 yard shot, probably. So I dialed the scope to nine power and I, geez, I thought I was on him. I don't, there is. There is some brush between me and where that wolf came out, but I, I just think I missed. Yeah, these are the tracks. This is that's the track. That's probably the wolf that I fired at. Right out. He was just coming out of here onto the road. He was down right here when I fired. Oh. Back of my chair, and I just hauled out the rangefinder. 264 yards, approximately, what the real distance was. I know I missed. I always sight my gun in to be dead on at 100. And for shots of that distance, I have to remember to hold high or even just above. I held right on that animal. That bullet landed in front of him. Son of bitches. What did I tell you, folks? That's that big rub I saw the other day. I've come to a small pond here, down in the bush. I'm going to have to uh, find this on the map. And above the pond, you can see the uh, uh, cut block up there. Overhanging branch, direct height. That's a mock scrape. Well, I did cut. I did cut a couple sets of tracks that I think belong to this buck, but they're not fresh. They're like a day or so old. They're recent enough to give a guy hope. But I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna keep walking here. Let's see if I can find a really fresh track. So as you can see, I didn't get a deer. I did have an awesome camping trip. It was it was really fun doing the whole wall tent thing. Uh, and then of course, 
huge change of plans when I saw that monster buck on the highway and I, and I had to break that camp, move off, go to a different spot. Didn't get the deer, didn't see the deer, but I started to see some of his trails and tracks and rubs and uh, then I crack at a wolf, missed the wolf. That's okay, live and learn. Uh, by the time of the 2022 hunting season, which I cannot wait for, I'm gonna know this area like the back of my hand. And we're gonna go back and we're gonna look for this monster buck in 2022. Happy trails, people. <laughs>